I love Edward Curtis. Edward Curtis is the stuff of American legend, self-invented. The notion that a person with a grade school education could articulate and finish a project of this enormous scope is kind of the stuff of the American dream. Curtis was an avid outdoorsman. He's hiking on Mount Rainier and hears calls for help in the distance. He finds two august scientists from Washington, D.C., who turn out to be George Grinnell of the National Audubon Society and Clint Merriam of the National Geographic Society. He rescues these fellows, and as one might imagine, they become pretty friendly. Curtis's friendship with George Grinnell, who was very involved with First Nations people, gave him a sort of broad scope of what was necessary to engage in an expedition that would be thorough, detailed, and humanistic. Through these connections, Curtis finally is in contact with the richest man in the U.S. J.P. Morgan, avid bibliophile, art collector, lover of all things beautiful, he says to Curtis, make me the most beautiful set of books you've ever seen. And Curtis complies. Curtis wrote, no pains will be spared to produce in every detail an exceptional example of bookmaking. His expectation, the time, the energy, the money, I think even the pressure he put on himself to create something magnificent to document a group of people that he saw as disappearing is really reflected in the visual property that we see today. When Curtis and Morgan first discussed the production of the North American Indian, it was anticipated that the 20 text volumes and 20 portfolios would require five years to complete. There's an understanding that traveling with a team of translators, scientists, musicologists, anthropologists is going to be costly. And after several years, it's apparent that the five-year time frame is premature at best. Court documents that were publicized in the 1930s indicate that the family had invested $2.5 million, the equivalent of $50 million today. Curtis gave Morgan sets number one through 25. Number one, the first set Curtis made, is still held by the Morgan Library in New York City. The remaining sets, two through 25, were given by Morgan to institutions such as the Vatican, to Guild Hall in London, to the Gottingen Library. This is set number 11. It was given by Morgan to the Cooper Union in New York. So there is a recognition that this is a monumental set, a monumental project, a word that's actually used in conjunction with the North American Indian over and over again. <laughs> 